Greetings! Welcome back. I'm so excited. This is episode two of my steam engine build. Roll the credits! Big thanks to all those who watched the previous episode and any other of my videos that I've put on on YouTube, which is not many yet. Um, your support has, is much appreciated. I'm having so much fun. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, please click the subscribe button and please click the notification bell. You'll get notifications of when I, I next release a video uh, and your support will help this channel grow a little bit bigger, get a bit better. Now enough waffle, on with the show. Roll. So we've got the frames on the bench. As mentioned in episode one, uh, I made a schoolboy error and put these, managed somehow to get them in the completely the wrong, wrong place. Uh, and on the last batch of laser cutting parts that I had done, uh, I got some 10 mil discs made. Show you that there. Uh, and I'm gonna focus in on it. Um, and I've just popped these in the lathe and I've just taken the, the corner off to give it a bit of a prep um, to just give me something to key into when I'm welding it in with the magnet underneath. The disc then just simply slots in and I can tack it and then we can weld it up. Uh, these, they're small enough that I can fill those with weld. So, that's what we're going to get on with. Filled both of the holes. They might need a little touching up later, but the reason I've done them holes first is just to get a bit of heat in the frame. It will weld better because it's such a thick material, you'll get a bit better penetration with this bead hot. Dress them off, clean them up, and on to the next bit. I think a fresh disc. Right, so that's that one done. Uh, filled, ready to be remarked, and re drilled. Uh, or, in case, in this case, mag drill I'm gonna go and borrow my friends he's got a, a cutter about that size so I'll go borrow his I'll finish the other one off and then we'll mark up for the uh, rear suspension brackets Ooh. I've got both the frames now done uh, next job is to mount these brackets onto the frames at the rear here. Uh, I've got me, me drawing. I'm just going to disassemble these, take these brackets off and uh, mark up and weld them on. Mm. 
for some reason today. The camera keeps deciding it's going to turn itself off. I don't know why. Tight. It'd be fine. And that's this one done. Uh, brackets welded both sides, dressed off. Uh, I'll do the other one in a minute. I'll get that one finished off. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with how close the brake lay shaft is to this bracket. So yeah, as you can see, it's we're quite close. Um, not sure what to do with about that but I did get extra blanking plugs so if we need to we can we can blank that one up and move it over um, but I'll have to consult the drawing mm. it's definitely right to my original drawing but obviously the original drawing didn't have this type of suspension should look something like that uh, obviously there's one on both sides and then between the two there's a block basically a pillow block that when the uh, bearing sits in there the top of the bearing basically floats on top of the pillow block so that is what it should look like right so what's next with these frames well we need to put some holes here for the frame stretcher that goes in the middle but first I just need to check just double check where the bracket goes for the uh, slide bar that attaches to the, the, the cylinders um, and I think well obviously apart from these holes Yeah, yeah. Apart from these holes, and obviously the holes for the the the, the, the cylinders, uh, the inlet and the outlet holes, uh, which I'm going to do later on. I want to have some cylinders. Um, we're pretty much ready to put these together, so we're nearly there. Woohoo! Right, so the front buffer beam. We'll get on with that now. So I'm thinking, just stitch them together. When they come from the laser cutter, they come bowed. So what I'm gonna do, is hopefully you can see, and if I shut that end, this end, they're both bowed. They're both bowing like that. Now, if you're going to put them together, that is the best way to put them together. So they 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 will touch in the middle. First things first is I need to line them up, clamp them, uh, and mark where I'm going to weld because I'm only going to stitch weld it. And if it doesn't look great, I can always put some filler on it. As you can see, I like to mark out 
roughly where they're going. Um, does make it does make it a little bit easier, uh, and kind of looks neater as well. If you if you you know you, if you do see the stitch, um, it just makes it look look a little bit more even, a little bit neater. So I'll well, split it apart, grind them up, so there's a bit of a prep on it, so I can fill it with Meg, and uh, it'll be ready for drilling then once it's all welded. Awesome. I don't know if you can see that, but I've cut a quite a deep, a deep groove in, uh, so I can get a good, a good amount of welding. Um, so it, it, it doesn't feel too bad. Feels. Feels pretty close, there's just a little bit at the bottom there. It's alright everywhere else. Um, obviously having them laser cut at two separate times. The setup could have been slightly different. It'll be alright. It'll be alright for this. We're not building a piano are we? There we go, it's welded. Now considering that my welder is only a 240 volt, 180 amp. That didn't do too bad. I've used bigger machines that have welded worse than that on material and that thing. Um, now I think once it's dressed off, It'll hold itself together with the bolts in as well. It'll be perfect. So I'll save you the uh, the grinding. So when you return, it'll be dressed. buffer beam ready to be bolted to the frames yes there's probably a few more things that need to be uh, drilled into it obviously we've got the the, the the mounting for the coupling um, I think there'll be some angle on there at the tops but uh, I think we can get away with doing those in situ once the frames are together but yeah Super! It's getting a bit more exciting every minute. Next! In episode one, I showed you loads of parts that had just come in fresh from the laser cutter. 
And uh, in them were these delightful looking pieces. Which, some may say, what are they? This is a kit form of my frame stretcher. It very simply slots together. I say simply, try to do it one handed. It literally slots together. Now you may be wondering now, what are these absolutely giant holes for? And these tabs, what, what's going on? Well, here's some I prepared earlier, but I prepared some lovely little angles, cut to size, drilled. These go just in here. They'll be sitting flush with the end. Like so. And there we are. Without, obviously it's not welded. My frame stretcher. And those giant holes at the back are to plug weld the angles to the, to the stretcher. So this is my next job. Right, to spare you any further time watching me grind and dress and do all that in this video. I've got on, got everything dressed, got the edges prepped where they needed to be prepped and now we'll just uh, we'll get it together and tack it up. Right, so there you go, it's fully welded. Welded, dressed, done. Ready, frame stretch, done. I think this is gonna be better than the one on the original drawing. The one on the original drawing is, there's two angles down the inside of the frames with a, a piece of flat bar welded to the angle. Uh, bit flimsy for my mind so I've come up with this it's nice and rigid a lot stronger should uh, do the job on that note it's time to end the video hopefully you've enjoyed it please like share comment all that shenanigans and I'll uh, see you in the next video Leaders. Suppose I better tidy up then, aren't I?